Hey watch friends, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite watch models from one of my favorite watch brands. This is the Dorenzo DRZ04 Mondial version 2. So as is mentioned there with the version 2, there was a prior iteration of this and in fact we actually did a detailed review of that if you care to check it out. That will go into much more depth than I intend to for this video because as we'll see, there's more that carries through from the version 1 than is changes for the version 2, but that's not a bad thing. With uh, this particular version, I do want to mention up front, this is actually included in a version 1 case because this is just the prototype that's loaned to the channel for review. So with that being said, we'll talk about what differences you can expect for the version 2. First, as far as the packaging. In case you missed it, I recently unboxed this particular one. It gives you an idea of the packaging. Familiar box, nice canvas roll that comes with that. I will note one thing that changed from the version 1 is previously you had this butterfly clasp as well as a fold over clasp option that was included. Now that is still going to be available with the fold over clasp. It comes standard on the butterfly, but the fold over clasp is now an optional accessory. That for me is not a bad thing. While I personally was excited that they did the dual option with the version 1, as it turns out with my personal pair, I've actually left them on the butterfly, really enjoyed them, extremely comfortable, but we'll dive into that. As far as the basic specs, this comes with a two-year warranty still. The case is 40.2 millimeters, and that's roughly from the 3 to 9. The bezel does step down. It's coming in at 38.6 millimeters. The lugs, as you can see, it's kind of a Henta style uh, watch here, and it does have an integrated bracelet. The lugs are coming in at 23.8 millimeters at the outside of the lugs themselves. The actual end link in there is coming in at 14.1. The lug to lug is a nice wrist versatile 47.9 millimeters and total thickness is extremely impressive really love this aspect only 11.4 millimeters and that's including that sapphire crystal that does have a subtle dome to it and as mentioned that is a sapphire crystal it is a double dome and it does have an inner air coating the mid case on this as you can see nice very streamlined there that's only coming in at roughly 6.1 millimeters for that mid case that's part of what i really enjoy about this i think it gives it a very classy feel on wrist really tucks underneath the shirt cuff easily so you can wear this casual sport dress pretty much anything you name it the movement is still going to be a salita sw200-1 and it is still the uh, elaborate grade and it does have the inca block for that the water resistance is 100 meters or 10 atmospheres so plenty of, uh, of water resistance for the style in my opinion the weight size to my six and a half inch wrist on this factory bracelet and we'll look at some other options as well it is coming in at 135.9 grams. So it's enough that you certainly feel it on the wrist, but by no means is it heavy. I think it's well balanced overall and fits nicely. All right, so now with all that out of the way and rehashing some of the basic specs for this, let's go ahead and look at the new colors because this is one of the biggest changes. Obviously, there's going to be the red version that we're looking at today, but additionally, there's going to be a purple version, which is absolutely a stunner. Check that out if you haven't already on Jody's channel, Just One More Watch. There's also a light blue version really gorgeous color there as well there's another play on a red there's actually a red meteorite limited edition version and then there's a bring back of the version one white which is very popular and in case you happen to see the interview uh, that i did with con seller a while back that was actually listed as one of my favorite watches specifically that variant and that continues to be the case excellent so really nicely done there as far as the color choices i like what i'm seeing the overall construction on this is still going to be very similar to what you come to expect from the version one. With the exception of the meteorite, they're all going to be a one piece style construction. So that gives it that signature bowl shape, which is one of my favorite attributes of this. The meteorite by the nature of the material that does have a two piece for the rehot, though it blends in and I think seamlessly integrates. I personally though am partial to that, that one piece construction, love that. The overall layout is still going to be very similar. There is only a date version and the date will be at six o'clock. The markers carry through, the handset carries through. As you can see, gorgeous skeletonization, nice round uh, accents all over that sticks with like an aviation style theme throughout. The printing is still very clean. You do have your inner hashes and outer hashes on the dial, as well as of course the marker integration with the changes over for the size. The dial textures are going to vary depending on what model you go with. It's either going to be a sunburst pattern or it will be a matte pattern depending on the coloration that you choose, which with of course the red version that we're looking at being the sunburst variant. The overall, I think the aesthetic is still just as clean as it ever was. I love the overall design of the case itself. We've talked a lot about the dial in the handset and I've talked about that of course in the prior review as well. But one of the things, just look at this case here. You have nice 
with the bezel, you can see how that kind of steps. It has nice polished accents for that without being overly done with the polishing. There's throughout the bracelet, throughout the bezel, they're just those little touches that give you some of that dressy feel to it while still keeping its overall sport aesthetic. And I think that's an excellent choice overall. And I really like that. The case, as you can see, it is still going to be more of a slab kind of construction. And again, this is the version one. So when I say still going to be, this is carrying through for the version two. The big thing that you will see as a difference on the version two is the version two will have drilled lugs. And we'll talk about why in just a moment on an integrated bracelet, specifically because there's going to be specific straps that are available for that, a black and a white. They're actually already available and you can use those on the version one, but the drilled lugs will make that easier to change as well. Overall though, the construction is still going to be the same. Still have, again, all that brushing and polishing accent. It is still all going to be hardened coated. So that takes it up to 800 Vickers, which kept, has kept mine over the last year or there about looking like, a, like brand new on both of mine that we'll look at here shortly. So that's a nice touch there. And I like that overall. As far as the crown, this is still going to be the same configuration there, 6.9 millimeters. It is a screw down crown. You can see it is signed there as well. And again, more brushing and polishing accents as you go through. So it's just very cohesive throughout all of that. Shifting over to the case back, you can see the case back is still continuing forward with the exhibition style. Still has a very nice looking custom rotor that's included there as well. Nice Geneva striping. And I think it's a really good looking movement overall. I love the actual case back itself with that screw down construction. I love the bee blasting. I love the key holes for that. I think it's really tastefully done. Shifting over and taking a look at the loom, the loom on this has actually performed very well on this particular variant. I will say it's performed at least as well as my prior version one uh, did. If anything, this seems like it might endure slightly better. It might be a little more saturated, but honestly, that could just be in my head or it could just be playing off of the particular coloration here. But overall, it's performed well and I'm satisfied with that, especially for the style of watch that this is. The hands, I would like to be kicked up a little bit more if possible, but I think it's good performance, especially on the style. As far as the bracelet, the bracelet is still everything that you would expect from the prior version. As we already talked about, it tapers from 20, 24 millimeters and actually does come down at the clasp to 18 millimeters. It has that gorgeous inlay of the polished accents in H-link brush configuration. And I think that's really nice looking. The bracelet articulates so excellently, which on an integrated bracelet, that is so critical to have that comfort. And I found each of these Lynx has no hot spots whatsoever. It contours perfectly to the wrist. It just drapes excellently. Really love the bracelet. Fantastic. And that's why personally that would be my choice for, uh, for this. Though I will show you the straps here, which without further ado, let's go ahead and actually take a look at those straps. As you can see here, there is a white variation that's available. And this is a nice, I believe, fluorocarbon for uh, the rubber. It, of course, gives you, I think, a little bit of a more of a summery kind of feel, especially on this red, but it contours to the wrist nicely. Overall, it's comfortable. But there's also a version that is black for that. It's going to be the same configuration. So you can see both of these have a very interesting pattern on the exterior of, uh, of these straps. I think they're really good looking overall, and I think they play in nicely, and they keep almost that link style configuration, even on the rubber variant. And they do fit very well uh, also. All right. So now that we have a better feel for the watch itself and some of the options there, let's go ahead and talk about what you can expect. First, this is going to be launching on June 25th of 2022. So just in a couple days here after publishing. The price on these for the standard variants converted to US dollars at the time of recording is roughly $671 and it's 919 for the Meteorite version, that limited edition. As we already talked about here, as far as the changes from the version one, which the version one, let's go ahead and kind of recap what what I felt about that. I've already talked a lot about the fact that I enjoy the watch a lot. I think it's extremely comfortable on wrist. I think it tapers great. I think it's an excellent design. I think the finishing is very good, especially for the money. At just under $700, I think you get a lot of value for it. So no, it's not one of the cheapest watches out there, but I really think it delivers. And I think it personally, to me, feels every bit of a thousand plus really into the multi-thousand uh, territory. Every time I put this on, it just feels like I'm wearing a luxury piece. Really enjoy that quite a lot. The design itself, I think, is uh, is excellently done. Really a big fan of Sergio in his design language. That's the owner of Dorenzo. Great there. The coating has kept it looking uh, excellent throughout uh, that, which let's go ahead and actually pop in. So here is with my white version. You can see just an idea of what that looks like. And of course, this is coming back for the version two. So that'll give you an idea there. But check this out. 
you know, to obviously excuse any fingerprints or anything like that. But I mean, this thing is just fantastic condition and that's seen a fair amount of use. Here is one of the original versions. This is a sunburst here with the gray dial. And you can see again, look how nice that, that looks, <laughs> pardon any, uh, any fingerprints, but has just held up really well um, there also. So that just gives you an idea as far as kind of contrast here, get a little bit of Ohio State kind of coloration going for uh, for that uh, that pairing. And then I had mentioned the clasp. This is the optional clasp. This is the fold over clasp. I actually have it on the Solaris uh, model here, the DRZ05, because I do prefer the slimmer than uh, what comes with the Solaris. But otherwise though, you can see it even still has, I believe the plastic uh, on there and hasn't really seen a whole lot of wear until I put it onto this. I actually didn't uh, ever change it out from this because I was just so happy with, uh, with those. But that gives you an idea of some of the options that are available. I mentioned some of the minor QC items that I had. I can't really do too much of a uh, QC comparison on this because this is a prototype. So I don't want to talk about the case finishing, those kind of things. But looking at the dial, the dial to me looks very clean. The markers look clean. Everything I think looks excellent overall. And as far as those, when I say that, if you go back and check out that video, they were very minor items um, that occurred with my, uh, my version one uh, pairing. And I'm extremely happy with, uh, with the model overall and wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. So I think that's, uh, that's still well done. So where does that leave us? I mean, as, as a whole, as I'm sure you picked up on throughout, you know, I loved everything about the version one. I'm glad they didn't change it up too much for the version two other than the colors. And I think the colors look great. So I'm glad to see that they're coming back strong. This is again, one of my favorite personal watches uh, that are available. And I think with the colors, if you like a little more pop, or if you want to stay subdued with the white, you've got a lot of options available. So I do encourage you to check this one out if this style appeals to you. So with all of that, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this quick look at the version two. If you did enjoy it, please do hit that like button. Additionally, if you haven't done so already, please do smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.